Wow, 4.22 p.m. I'm gonna do about a 20 to 30 minute live. And uh, I got a lot of information to kind of cover in this one, which I wanna give you guys a chance to kind of hear and listen to. I have a lot of thoughts, um, some ideas I think that will be beneficial to people and just conversations and just information that I've been able to gather um, over the last week. And I haven't done a live in a while, so I, you know, there's some stuff I wanna throw out there and see if you guys um, resonate with. And uh, I hope that you guys take value from this video that's coming out. So anyways, you know, without further ado, I want to take too long. I got stuff I got to get to shortly. Hope everybody's doing well. If you're doing well, give me a thumbs up in the chat. And, uh, you know, I think you guys will appreciate what's coming as we try to help you guys make better decisions with Beast, baby, with Beast. Okay, so make sure you're listening, bro. Headphones on and listen. Give me a thumbs up though, bro, if you're ready. So there's a lot of stuff that's kind of been stewing on my mind of what to do, how to do it, why to do it. Um, and, and changes to happen. So this is my personal opinion. You may not agree. That is perfectly fine. It's okay. No issue. Uh, I feel like in grassroots, so I consider grassroots anything other than MLS academies and or any, any program that has a professional pathway. And the, the thing is, so that would be like 97% of players. They don't have the level. They're not good enough. Um, and, and there's some changes that I think we should make, especially with a World Cup coming with the impact Messi has made, and I feel like these will help uh, for the long-term player development because, like, U.S. soccer came out and said, we want to implement play, practice, play. Okay, I'm on board with play, practice, play to a certain extent, and I'll get to that in a second. So I have it here in front of me, uh, and I'll read it to you. And these are the changes that I would want to see happen immediately for the next year, so 2024, 2025, and... It's, it's really, really simple, okay? So, like, for example, U7, U8, U9, they either do 4v4 or 7v7. Scrap that. Go straight to 3v3. 3 versus 3. Bar, that's it. 3 versus 3. And by doing that decision to go 3 versus 3, my goal would be preferably to go with a goalkeeper and two field players. You could also do it without it. Uh, but I, I think... And still in a goalkeeper, kids like to shoot. Parents want to see goals. I think they have more fun that way. Um, I think that would just add to player development because when you talk about seven versus seven, and I've talked about this before, man, but kids are pigeonholed. They only get to play one position. They don't get the rotate. They don't get flexibility. They don't get touches on the ball. Like I posted a, a story the other day of, it was a, a stat that had like the touches on the ball, the runs and stuff like that. And like, it's actually interesting. A lot of people thought that the kid got a lot of touches. He got 260 touches in the ball. Well, I'm like, he's under eight. He's a, he's a seven or eight-year-old kid, and he got 200 touches in the ball. If you do the math, let me break down the math, make sure I'm not incorrect. So give me one second. If you do the math on the number of touches that this kid got in the ball in a 90-minute practice, check this out, in 90 minutes, give me one second. I just need to close this. I'm doing it on my iPad. How the hell do I close this? I have a freaking ad on my iPad because I don't know if you guys know this, but the iPad does not come with uh can do that. There you go. Okay. So we said a 90 minute practice and let's just say it was 218 touches on the ball. I don't remember the exact number, but let's just say 218. And I did this backwards. So sorry. Give me one second. I need to start over. So 218 divided by 90. Let's see what the number equates to. That means in a 90 minute practice, this eight year old, an eight year old, bro, an eight year old got... 2.4 touches on the ball per practice or at that practice as a seven and eight year old. That is ridiculous. If your player, in my opinion, is not getting at a minimum at that age group, a thousand touches on the ball, there is a fundamental problem and the coach is cash cowing you. I, I don't want to say that, but I'm just telling you the truth. If your player is not getting at that age group, 10 and younger, minimum 10 and younger, a thousand touches in the ball at practice in a 90 minute session, then there's a fundamental problem. If you agree with that, give me a big old thumbs up, bro. If you agree with that, give me a big old thumbs up. Be like, yeah, Kyle, that's fire. You know, whatever. Whatever you think, let me know. If, if you disagree with me, give me a thumbs down. That's cool, bro. I'll take the disagreement. But that, that's the thing, right? So that's ridiculous that a kid at eight years old gets 2.4 touches in the ball per minute. That's crazy. That, that's crazy. Like, it's unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. So, like I said, I, I need to pull this back up. 
the, the, the idea is this, right? Like I said, we want to transition from seven versus seven to three V three. And the whole point of doing this is the kids. Oh, by the way, I think you'll love this point too. No, no. Somebody asked, it's a good question. Would it be done in practice? You can do it in practice as well, but it would be at official sanctioned matches. So I'm saying my target is, and I'll explain it in further detail in a second. Take out 7v7, take out 9v9, and I'll make it easier. So when we take out 7v7, these three age groups are going to do three versus three. It's going to be U7, U8, and U9. Three versus three. Goalkeeper, two field players. Maximum six players in the roster. And there's other rule changes. I don't want to go into that right now, but I just want to make sure you guys understand on a much smaller field, obviously, and you're going to use futsal size goals. Just make sure that's very clear. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. For the U10, U11, and U12, we go 5v5. One goalkeeper, four field players. And if we make those changes, it will 100% give players more touches on the ball, the opportunity to not be pigeonholed, okay? The opportunity to not be pigeonholed to say, hey, you're only going to play defense. You're only going to play goalkeeper. You're only going to play forward. You're only going to play left wing. No more. Absolutely zero. No more, okay? And basically, the, the, the spy v5 would be futsal format. And, like, we all talk about, like, I've had this conversation with multiple people like, we don't have the soccer culture. Well, to bring a soccer... I'm using the wrong word. Crap. I'm using the wrong word. Football culture. We don't have a football culture. We have a soccer culture. We have a kickball culture. My bad. I made a mistake. Point is, we don't have a football culture. If we're going to develop a football culture, we need to have a fundamental change in the environment. Well, that means our age groups have to change. However, my opinion is I don't believe that U.S. soccer or U.S. youth soccer or all the other badges and all this other stuff will want to, to allow that. And here's why. Money. Like if you think about it, if you do the 3v3 format that I'm talking about, that means I would allow six players on a roster. Six maximum. I'd prefer five to be honest, but six. And um, if you do that, that means because 77 allows 12 players maximum. That's half the amount of players. Half the amount of players. So th that's why I'm saying we need to do this. I, I think from a, a growth standpoint of youth players to get a buy-in of culture, to get people to want to play. Like you look at basketball. Okay, let's flip this to basketball for a second. You go to a basketball court, you can't play more than 5v5. But we can now set up a bunch of mini fields, micro football fields, whatever you want to call it, around the country. Because we have all these facilities. And... We can set it up to where, like, for example, there's a complex down the street for me. It has four 11 v 11 fields. You know how many micro football fields we can make on that? 60? 100? I don't know. I, I'm not sure what the number would be, but, you know, I'm, I'm putting this all together now. But I think this fundamental change would make kids have more fun. Parents would be more happy because it would it would just be a inclination for development because your child will have to get better with obviously with time but instead of doing 77 3 3 and 5 and 5 would change the game in my opinion now here's what's interesting i think this is important if you are in orlando i am finalizing right now a 3v3 and a 5v5 league i just had a meeting this morning all the paperwork and stuff is basically good to go there's like two more pieces we have to get done so hopefully next week we're going to be making an announcement about a 3v3 and a 5v5 league that will start this winter. Okay, because I am sick and tired of watching kids play 7v7 and 9v9 and pardon my French, I'm sorry I'm going to say it like this, when they suck and don't have the level. And you guys are going to say, well, that's, that's too harsh, Kyle, you shouldn't say it like that. Okay, they don't have the level. They don't have the five key skills that I talked about. They don't have the core skill. They don't have the dribbling ability. They don't have the 1v1 ability. They don't have the passing ability. And they definitely don't have the receiving ability. And when you don't have those things, you cannot teach tactics beyond basic concepts. Like, that's just my personal opinion. You don't have to agree with it in any way, shape, or form. That's cool. But that's the way that I feel. And um, 
it, it would hopefully at least bring more people into the environment of understanding that it is okay for development to take priority. Because when you start changing age groups like this, it forces change. It's not going to be an easy thing to, to get with. But hopefully people will be on board and understand that changes like this will bring hopefully more development processes. And somebody said, I missed it here, but I'll, somebody said, it's not for sure, but you were overlooking one major problem, enough qualified coaches, more teams require. Listen, I, I don't disagree with any of that. I mean, again, that's why I have some of my content available for free, or my content is available for free. Like one of them is fundamental futsal tactics. That's a gold mine, in my opinion, because if you want to have any idea how to do foot, futsal tactics, which could be implemented at 3 3 and 5 5, then yeah, I mean, all day it'll be there. Reducing players, clubs, well, you don't even, the thing is, it's reducing the players per team. You would just have more teams. Um, so that does obviously bring a different challenge. Um, but I don't know if everybody understands the, look, when you make a change, there will be a drop off. You know, people, nobody likes change. Don't get me wrong. Nobody likes it. So it's going to be hard to implement. But the point is, if it's done with the long-term vision in mind, the long-term, it's going to make a difference. So we're creating in Orlando a 3v3 and a 5v5 league that will have certain specific rules regarding development. I have not finished it all yet. I can't tell you that I have. That'd be a lie. So point is, it's coming. It will be ready soon. Next week, we'll probably make an announcement that it will be available and when it will be starting and whatnot because I'm, I'm tired of it, bro. Like I, I can't. I can't keep watching kids that don't have the level go play 77 or go play 99. It's just, it's a waste of everybody's time. Now, here's what's interesting. Oops. The change happens at U13. U13 is when they go back to full-sided 11 versus 11. I wanted to extend that actually till 15. But I said, I think that would be too much of a change and people would lose their mind mentally. So I said, you know what, I'll, I will make a compromise and I'll just make it U13. I was even thinking maybe U14, but I'm like, again, there'll be, I think, too much outrage. And yes, before you ask, there will be a complete learning curve going from 3v3 to 5v5 to then go to 11v11. So the 3v3 to 5v5 would be a small learning curve. To go from 5v5 to 11v11 would be a big learning curve. There is no question about that. But here's what the great news is. By doing this... By doing it at U13, you will have two years of potential development before it really matters. And that's the best part. Siren, yeah, it'll be ready. Uh, like I said, all the, 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 the primary paperwork is done. Uh, we have one more meeting next week to finalize all the details. And I believe that's Monday. So once I get that done on Monday, um, it will absolutely do the change. So once that's done on Monday, which it should be Monday, it might be Tuesday, but let's say Monday, then we have a final meeting on Wednesday. We're done. We get everything announced and we're ready to rock because I'm tired of it, bro. I'm tired of watching this stuff happen. And I, I think it would just bring uh, energy, it would bring positivity, it would bring a better environment for your son, everybody's son in Orlando, and then hopefully we can scale this to where it gets to more people. Um, and, and the great news is this will be an official sanctioned league. This is not some like pop-up event that I'm throwing together. This is an officially sanctioned league. So you have to have player cards. You have to have all that crap to be available to participate. Because everybody's going to say, well, is it sanctioned or not? Yes, it's sanctioned. 100% sanctioned. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So those are the ideas that we're coming with because time, t it's time for change. And the only way to do change is by thinking, again, I always say this, outside the box. Okay, now there's kind of three more things I want to talk about. Where do I want to go with this next one next? Okay, so everybody talks to me about wanting to play for an MLS Academy. And cool. I love MLS Academies. I think they're great. I think the idea is good. I have some discrepancies with them, but that's a different point. What I want to talk about, though, is I want to help educate you guys that talk about wanting to get to an MLS Academy. Because this is important. And this is where it comes into play. MLS Academies... And I, I learned this over the last week and a half, two weeks. And the, the thing is, they have two tracks. They have what you call MLS Next, which everybody knows. Everybody knows MLS Next. And then they have a second track, which is called Pro Pathway. So the Pro Pathway is designed for players that they believe. 
说。So the the pro pathway is designed for the the pro pathway is is designed for players that the MLS academies feel have the potential to become first team players. Now the key is, it's usually one. Maybe two, maybe three, and maybe four. Maybe. Normally one, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. Oh, can't hear. So hold on, I'll give you guys a second. Hopefully you can hear me now. Yikes, that's because somebody was calling me. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, no? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. If you can't hear me, let me know again. Let me see if I can fix that. Still not hearing me, damn. Okay, so I think you can hear me. Okay, so people don't know this about MLS Academies. I was talking about the MLS Next and the Pro Pathway track. So they have two sides. Um, how do I explain this? So... Everybody knows that there's MLS Academies. There are two tracks. MLS Next, which everybody plays in, including pay to play. And the other side would be the Pro Pathway. Okay, so the MLS Academies, they have one, two, maybe three, maybe four players that they believe have the potential to become a professional player. So the players that they don't believe have the potential to be an you know, a future first team player, they will 100% play in the MLS next track. That means they're playing against the pay to play versions of MLS next. Um, I don't want to use names because then people are going to say, oh, you're calling people out. I'm not trying to call people out. I'm just explaining. But so, for example, in Orlando, we have Orlando City Academy. And then you have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Five, four or five MLS Next pay-to-play programs in Orlando. So there's one academy that's free, and then the rest are all pay-to-play. So that means the Orlando City Academy, the kids that are not going to play the Pro Pathway games, are going to go play all those MLS Next pay-to-play games, including outside of Orlando. So that includes Tampa, wherever else they're traveling to, right? Tampa, Miami, Orlando. Okay, the MLS Pro Pathway are for the one, two, three, four, whatever players that they believe have the potential to be on the first team. And they only play against MLS academies. So that means Orlando City Academy versus Columbus Crew, Orlando City Academy versus DC United Academy, Orlando City Academy versus FC Dallas Academy, so on and so forth. Now here's the kicker. Obviously, you can't have a game with one player, two player, three players, four players. So then they're taking a roster of another, let's say it's four players. So, or let's do two. Two's easier, quicker math in my head. So two players, that means they're taking another 16 players to that event. So when they Orlando City Academy goes to play against FC Dallas Academy in the Pro Pathway, they take the two players that they believe at that age group plus 16 other ones that are filling the roster for that game. Now, how do you know who's on the pro pathway? Now, I can't say this is certain for every single MLS Academy, but what I can tell you is I've spoken, I've, sorry, I've spoken to two guys that work for MLS Academies, either in the scouting department or in the Academy sequence, and they have said that they put all of the players that they believe have the potential to be first team players on individual development plans. That's an IDP, individual development plan. They put the players on those. So if, again, using Orlando City, I don't know how many players they believe have the potential, but let's say it's two at one age group, so say U15, they're going to put those two kids on an individual development plan. That means everybody else is not getting one. So that means Orlando City at that time and place think that those two kids have the potential to be first-team players in the future because they're getting an IDP. 
All the other players are not. But, of course, you can't have a game with one or two players. You need to have a, a full bench, full roster to play games. So, just make sure you understand that detail because everybody's like, oh, I want to go to an academy because it's the chance to make the first team. Okay. Well, if you go to an academy, using Orlando City Academy because I live in Orlando, and you do not get an IDP, an individual development plan, they do not see your son or daughter. It's son, not daughter. They don't see your son potentially reaching the first team. At least in that moment, things could change. It's not entirely possible or improbable. It's not highly likely, but it, that, that's how it works. So I just want to make sure people understand that because everybody goes, I want to go to an MLS Academy. I think it's great. you know. But you need to understand that if you actually get to an MLS Academy, that means... You know, part of the work is done, obviously, but only 0.3% or 3%, so really 3 or four, three to 4% 3 to is a player making it to the first team. If it's two players, it's about 8%. If it's three players, it's about 12%. If it's four players, it's about 16%. So, and those players would be on the individual plans. So I want to make sure you guys all understand it. Does that make sense? If that makes sense to you, give me a thumbs up. If you understand that, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, let me know because I want to make sure that you guys understand that detail. If not, I can explain further. And if anybody has any questions about that, please ask. Because, you know, many people tell me, I get, you know, honestly, I get two to 300 messages a day typically on Instagram. Um... From you guys, you know, a lot of you guys say, I want, I want my son to make an MLS Academy. Okay, cool. Well, understand that there's repercussions to that. Here's the second thing that you guys don't know about MLS Academies that's really important for you to understand. Okay, so do you guys know why MLS Academies are free? If you know why an MLS Academy is free, give me a thumbs up. Okay, if you don't know why, give me a thumbs down or give me like a question mark or something. So... So the other player's not on, no, nobody pays. So if you're in, well, I shouldn't say nobody. I think there's one academy or two academies that you have to pay for. Um, the other ones are 100% free for everybody. You don't pay anything to be in it. So to be in Orlando City Academy, you do not pay for it. So Cassandra, how do we find out if the MLS Next Club is free? Well, I don't know where you live, but for example, in Orlando, there's one academy that is free. That is Orlando City Academy. That is the actual academy that is at the first team. Okay, Does, I hope that makes sense. Now, um, if you play for MLS Next, that is not an academy that is free. That is a pay-to-play version. Just to make sure that, hopefully that makes sense. So, Vincent, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about in a second. I'm going to explain that here in detail. So, here's the stumbling block that can happen if you go to... And MLS Academy. This is really important. So if you want this information, you need to give me a triple thumbs up. Like thumb up, thumb up, thumb up. You know, you, you're going to want this information. Because if you want to go to an MLS Academy, there is a potential repercussion for joining one. Okay, so I just want to make sure you guys understand this. Now, here's the deal. Okay. MLS Academies are free. They're free. Because they own your son's rights. What does that mean? That means if you complete one year at an MLS Academy, they own a percentage of your child. You need to make sure you understand that. That means they own training compensation on your child. So what does that actually mean? That kind of sounds complicated. It is complicated. I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible because it is complicated. Basically, how this works is there's a training compensation structure from level one to level four. Okay, I want to make sure you guys understand that. Level one to level four. Level ones are the top level academies. Level two is the second level, three and four. I'm trying to make it as basic as possible. Okay, I don't know where MLS Academies fit on that pipeline. I would probably assume level two. Um, maybe three. I don't think level one because that, there's a certain requirement you have to have, and that's usually top clubs around the world. But the reason, the, or not the reason, but the point is, 
So if you complete one year at an MLS academy, they own your child's rights. So that means, for example, if Real Madrid comes calling and says, hey, we want to take Kyle to Real Madrid to come with the 17s. They own the player's rights, which means now Real Madrid has to pay to get that player released. And you guys might have seen the story about the kid who got blocked. I think he's in like in Kansas or something. He got blocked by one academy because another one came and they wanted $150,000. And the kid did not even play in the academy. He was on the block list. So it's nuts. And you guys as parents have to understand what you're putting your child into and understand the potential risk. Because if you want to go to Europe or you want to go to South America with your child, you're not going to want to go to an MLS Academy. Because if you spend one year there, and they might even be able to try and milk that lower, so maybe it's six months, right? And then you're like, hey, I'm leaving. We want to go to Spain. And you get to Spain and your son joins your son joins Real Madrid Academy, just as an example. Then guess who's going to want their money? MLS Academy. They're going to call and be like, we want our money. You can't register the player until that is done. Because I'll tell you this privately. There's a guy I know. He's a technical director at one of the biggest MLS clubs in the country. And they signed a player from Brazil. They had to, the player from Brazil, before he could sign, he had to go to each and every single one, him and his, his agent, had to go to every single club, because he was still a younger player, and get the clubs to waive the right for training compensation and solidarity payments. Because this MLS club did not want to pay the Brazilian clubs for his development. So they had to go get the signature to waive the rights for the training compensation. So this MLS club did not pay for it. So they got the player for free because they got the rights waived. I don't think many MLS clubs are going to waive their right to players, just to be very clear. Because once they have their right, and then your son leaves and goes somewhere else to Europe, for example, and then some club picks him up, good luck getting released, man. They're not going to release you. I thought that the kid had... Just did the tryout. Yeah, I don't know what the situation was with this kid, but he was on the block list. And he was on the protected block list, which means that he was one of the nine players that they blocked within their radius to stop any other MLS club picking up. So the block list only affects MLS academies. Does that make sense? If that makes sense, give me a thumbs up. I hope you understand that because I think that's important. I don't think people understand that. Um, or most people I don't think have understood that because I think like that detail, like who doesn't want their kid to play for free? That's awesome. But there is a cost for your child playing for free. The cost is at an MLS Academy, they own your child's rights. Okay. What is the blacklist? It's not a blacklist. It's a block, B-L-O-C-K, block list. MLS academies can block nine players that are not a part of their academy, but in their region. So I'm going to, I'm going to type it because you guys seem a little confused. It's called the block list. Just to make sure you guys understand. The block, B-L-O-C-K. They can block. So again, I live in Orlando. Orlando City Academy can block up to nine players that do not that do not play for Orlando City Academy within within the region. And I think it's like three players per age group, maybe it's four. Anyways, hopefully that makes sense. Now good question. Somebody's asking how long do they own your rights? So FIFA has put out the training compensation um, guidelines. The last one that I saw was from 2021. I have not seen an update. I don't know if they've released an updated but training compensation is 12 to 23 years old. So let that thing let that sink in for a second. Training compensation for normal clubs, I'm assuming MLS academies are in the same uh, stipulations, is from 12 to 23 year old. Now here's the deal. That's exactly why MLS academies start at 12. So Orlando City Academy has their first age group, U12. 
Then they have U13. Next year, they're going to have U14. Then they're going to have U15. So they own your rights from 12 to 23 years old. That's the, that's the age range that a club can get training competition on players. So every single year that your player is in a club, whether it's here or in another club in Europe, for free, they own a percentage of your rights. No, I mean, like, for example, if you go to Orlando City Academy, you, um, if you go to Orlando City Academy, you have to sign a contract explaining or agreeing to that your players in the academy and they own your rights after a year. I mean, I'm sure they don't make it that point blank, but the point is that they make you sign that document. Okay, are parents informed that their child is placed on the blocked list? So how can you know if your child's on the blocked list? Great question. We had this happen with one of our players from our program at high soccer. He actually left Orlando City Academy, came to us at high soccer, and then FC Cincinnati called, wanted him, but he was on the block list. He got blocked. He was not allowed to transfer. So you won't know until you reach out to another MLS Academy and um, they will, you'll find out. Like this kid was blocked. They were like, hey, you can't go. He's blocked. And that's it. It's, it's that simple. So that's how you would know if he's on the block list. Another another Academy would call trying to get the player and then they, they have lists. So yes, even if the player plays for only one or two years, they own your rights. Because they invest, like the thing is, what you guys have to understand is when you go to an MLS Academy, they're paying for your kid to play. They're giving you the uniform. They're giving you the training. They're giving you the games, the travel. You don't pay for anything except for your gas to get him to practice. They even give you meals. Like Orlando City Academy, they give you food for free. Do the parents have a copy of the contract? I'm sure. I mean, you have to do some online signature, I think. I'm sure it's online. Like, I talked to a lady that rejected it, apparently, and she's like, yeah, we, we, it was all online. But that, that's important for you guys to understand. Like, that's not a simple way. Is there a way to opt out of what? How, what opt out of what? Can they block players that even only try? They can block anybody. Like, that's what you guys don't understand. They can block any player. So if, they, if your child does not play for an MLS Academy, they can block up to nine players. Just to make sure you guys understand that, up to nine players. The club selects who's blocked. So the block list is selected by the club. So again, using Orlando City Academy, Orlando City will block players that they feel may have the potential to come to the academy. They get to protect the protected list. They get to protect nine players in their area. So another club, so using Inter-Miami. If Inter-Miami is looking at a player here and he's on the, the protected list, that's what I'm calling it, the block list, will be not allowed to go to another MLS Academy. Yes, any player, even my boy, they pay to play. Yes, they can block your son because if you live, I think you said you live in California. So if you live in California and you're within, let's say, Los Angeles FC's re, uh, region and they like your son, even though he does not play for the Academy, he could be one of the one of four players that are on the protected slash blocked, blocked list. They don't, they don't have to release your son. And if he's on the block list and another MLS Academy wants him, they have to come pay for him to get him. Can a player try to opt out of a contract with the MLS Academy? I'm not really sure what that means. I mean, the only way you could opt out of it is if you just don't go. I mean, you got to understand their business first. If you join their program, your your child is an asset to them. So they, you know, they're not going to let you join the Academy for free because they want the rights to your player. Like, they're a business. And for most of them, they're probably operating very well because they're under a single entity. They don't care. They want your money. Like, that's why it's free. Because what used to happen is MLS academies, some of them had uh, academies that were not free. And clubs from around Europe would come and take, 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 one, two, three, four players. So MLS academies became free so they could put them on a block list. Yep. Yep. I mean, that, that's exactly it. They're going to lose money by not having you on a block list. Sorry, I asked a few times. Maybe you did not see it. How do I get my boys in the MLS Academy? Uh, I don't know where you live, AC, but basically um, to get him onto an MLS Academy, you can't get him on an MLS Academy. 
they will scout your son and they will invite him in for a trial. My son never tried out at an academy. He can still be blocked. Yes, Cassandra. I'm going to try and explain it one more time. So you live in Sacramento. I don't know who's the closest MLS club to you. Let's just use LAFC, right? Use them as the example. Your son could be a very good player. I don't know your son. I don't know anything about him. But let's see. Let's say that, let's say your son is under 15. So if your son is under 15 and LAFC has an under 15, even if he does not play for the academy, they can block up to four players per age group. Your son could be blocked by them. Could be. You don't know. Could be. It's not a very big chance unless your son is very, very good. So San Jose, perfect. San Jose. Okay, great. So San Jose. Still, point, the point is the same. They can block your son even though he does not play. He's never tried out. Absolutely. It's not a high chance that he is blocked, but they can do that. If I'm not in Florida, how to get scouted then? Well, scouted by who? I mean, I don't know where you live, man. I mean, that's uh, opening the question. But wherever you live, I mean, the first place to be would be your local MLS Academy. But again, they're going to look at five to 10,000 kids a year. You might be right. If Messi or Ronaldo had grown up in the USA, you probably may not have known them. They might not have ever been famous. Yeah, I mean, here is, is don't get me wrong, anywhere is about the money. But here it's really about the money. So they have to offer a position if they block you, correct? Nope. They do not have to offer you anything. Nope, 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 nope. All because you live in the MLS Academy's region, they can block you. Even though you do not play for the Academy, even if you have never tried out for the Academy, they can block you just because they know who your son is. And they can say, he's a potential talent. We don't want another MLS Academy picking him up. That's literally the power that they have. I think there are some lawsuits um, going on right now to help remove this. I don't know if it will be removed. There's, you know, ethical standpoints and whatnot, but you know, nobody knows what's going to happen. So uh, just to be very clear one more time, I live in Orlando. Okay, I'll use me as the example. Okay, obviously I'm not going to play for an MLS Academy too old, but let's pretend Kyle is 17 years old. Right, I have never played for Orlando City Academy. I play for a local club. And... They have a scout that's come and watch me maybe once or twice or whatever. They send the information back. They like me. I'm on their radar. They don't want another MLS Academy to come pick me up. So they put me on what is called the protected list. I'm just calling it the block list because it's a simpler term for you guys to understand. Block. You can't take them. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. How, how they find your son information to be blocked. Um, well, they have scouts. So, for example, Orlando City Academy has one or two scouts that go and look for players. So they're going to take reports, they're going to put players down, and they're going to bring them back to the, the academy. And um, hopefully that makes sense. So how does it work with new clubs? San Diego just got an MLS team. I know a lot of players from San Diego that play for LA MLS Academies. Well, so again, if they're not on the protected list, the block list, then they can pick anybody up they want. So, like, for example, Orlando City Academy, a lot of players come from Miami. But that's because MLS Academies, or I should say Orlando City Academy, no, nope, that's not correct, Inter-Miami Academy did not put them on the block list. So, at one point, Orlando City Academy had, like, 15 kids from Weston. Because they were not on the block list, they could go get those players. How do you know if your son is blocked? Yes, even if you're paying to play, your son could be on a block list. So the kid that was blocked in Kansas, he was playing ECNL. I'm assuming he was paying. He might not have been paying. He could have been scholarshiped. But um, he was blocked. He was not at an MLS academy. He was at an ECNL program. I'm assuming he was paying, and he was put on the block list. How do you know if your son is blocked? Um, it's very easy. If you try to go to another MLS academy, they'll check the protected list. If your son is on the protected list then he could not go to the MLS Academy without the Academy or the club paying for him. It's that simple. That's how you know. And we had that exact situation happen with us. As I mentioned earlier, we had a player in our program who was on the block list of Orlando City. FC Cincinnati came to look for him. And they, wanted, they, they invited him to go to a trial. The protected list came out. The block list came out. He was on the block list. So FC Cincinnati called and said, yeah, we can't take him. Um... 
He's on the block list of Orlando City, or the, the protected list. And that's it. So if they block you with the MLS Academy and doesn't offer you a position with them, what happens? They're blocked. <laughs> Nothing. You still do. Like, the thing is, like, if you play for a club, even if it's MLS Next pay-to-play. Okay, so let, let's use me. I play for a local MLS Next pay-to-play. Okay? I've never been to Orlando City Academy. I've never tried out for Orlando City Academy. I've never been invited to anything with Orlando City Academy. If I am on their protected or blocked list and another MLS Academy calls, I cannot go. They they own that. Like I like I don't know how else to explain it to you guys. They own that. They own your son in the block list. They don't own the rights to him in terms of like they don't get a fee for him. Well, they don't get compensation for formation on him. What they get is they can say, hey, cool, FC Cincinnati, you want Kyle? Okay, you're going to have to pay us $100,000 for us to release him from our protected list. So this doesn't impact you in any way, shape, or form if you are, how do I explain this? If you are in pay-to-play, you can do pay-to-play, no problem. If you want your kid to go to an MLS Academy and you're on the protected list, unfortunately, you are screwed. The only way to get out of that would be to sue and create a lawsuit and then hopefully they get the, the provision dropped, the protected list dropped. There's no other way about it. Like, I wish it was that simple. It's not. Um, Cassandra, I understand. I don't know, obviously, if your son is on the protected list or the block list. Uh, he might be, but there's not. it's not a high chance. But he could be. It's entirely possible. So if San Jose has him on the protected list, the block list, then no other MLS club can pick up your son without paying a fee or getting him released from the protected list. That does not mean, however, you cannot go to another MLS Academy. Sorry, another MLS Next or an ECNL or a UPSL or anything else. Anything pay to play, you can go to, no problem. This only impacts MLS Academies. It's only uh, Jay Rod Riz. It's only for MLS Academies, not MLS Next. I need to make sure that is very clear. It is not for MLS Next pay to play. It is only for MLS Academies. Is the fee capped or is it set or they can ask for whatever they want? Um, that is a good question. I don't know entirely, so I can't really give you that answer. What I do know is uh, the one kid this happened to, they wanted $150,000 for the kid because he did not play for the academy and he was on the protected list. So um, they did not... Eventually, he got released. Eventually, the club released him and he was able to go to uh, an academy. But he was protected for like three or four months before they actually released him, if not longer. It sucks, bro. I can't. I, I think that rule is very silly because I think MLS Academy should only be able to protect players that are in the system. Well, so, Sierra, good question. Um, it depends. I, I think, I don't know for sure, but I think it's on a club basis they can ask for a certain dollar amount, like the example I just gave. And how could that be legal for kids? It's because uh, they're free. Um, if you go to an MLS Academy, it's free. I can't tell you, like, the thing is, does USL Academies also have these protected lists? I don't believe so. Um, I think that's just an MLS thing, but I don't know 100%. Um, how am I going to answer your questions here? How can it be legal for kids? So I can't tell you how it can be legal for kids on the protected list that don't play for the academy or for an MLS academy. What I can say is if your child plays on um, – if your child plays for an MLS academy, then they can be blocked and I could understand why that they would have that fee and how it could be legal because they're paying for your kid to play. So if they're paying for your child to play and they're giving you everything for free, it's fair that they own your child's rights and they can block your kid. I think that's fair. However, on the flip side, if you're not in that and you're still paying for soccer, paying for an academy, then you can easily have that issue. SSF, Coach D, and Kyle, they don't charge other endless academies. So it's not necessarily that they don't charge. What I'm saying is the example that I gave was the one player in Kansas – he was on the protected list. The club that wanted the signing was asking for the release. And the club that owned his rights said, no, you need to pay us 
for him to be released. Obviously, it got to a point where after three or four months, it was dropped. But the premise is still the same. So, hopefully that makes sense, man. Is it only for kids, only X amount of miles from the academy or whatever? Most academy. Yeah, um... I don't know what the exact radius is, but there is a radius. I want to say it's around 100 miles. Um, I don't know what the exact number is. I'll do some research and figure it out for you, or I can ask the question. But there is a radius that prevents or protects players within a certain area. So, like, each MLS academy, ha and radius isn't the right word. I don't know what the right word is. It's not region, but territory. That's the word. MLS academies have a territory that has already been defined by MLS, so they have a certain territory. Orlando City has it. Inter-Miami has it. Atlanta United has it. Everybody has it. So that's how that works. And if you're in that territory, you could be put on the protected list. MLS is one corporation. Yes, they are a single entity. That is correct. They are selling players overseas. Yes, you could be sold overseas. There's one kid from Orlando City that went to a Belgian club, I think it was Gank, for $2 million. Absolutely, you could be sold. Yep, agreed. I don't think it's anything. 75 to 120 miles from training location. There you go. So that's what Coach Dean is saying. I cannot verify that's accurate, but that's the territory that, he's or that I was talking about. That is the territory. So it could be that. It could be that exact number. I don't know. What things to think about? But anyways, guys, I got to run. I got to get to training. This was a good live. I will save it so you can watch it. If you found value from this or anything that I've been posting, please share this with somebody. I think this would, you know, I, I'm doing a lot of this stuff, as you guys know, for free. I'm giving this away. I'm trying to help educate you guys. I have all of my online content 100% accessible to people for free. In my YouTube channel, my website is now taken down. I'm re-updating. I'm drinking water. And um, you can get all that stuff for free in my YouTube channel. Anyways, guys, I hope that makes sense. If you found value from this, I would greatly appreciate you help sharing this video or any of the other videos that I have out there with somebody. Um, just, you know, for the three or four years of, of stuff that I've given you guys for free, I would greatly appreciate it. It would help educate more people and uh, it would help me help more people. That's my goal. So without further ado, guys, I'll see you later. I got to get the train. So see you guys later.